This video is part of our course on Pi Side 6 for widgets, which is on Udemy. The course goes from the absolute beginning, showing you how you can take advantage of Qt widgets using the Python API under the Pi Side 6 or Qt for Python umbrella. And it covers things you really need on a daily basis, signals and slots, a bunch of widgets you can use. We show you how to use Qt Designer. At the end, we also show you how to work with networks and the model view architecture. If you are interested, be sure to check the link in the description below. In this lecture, we are going to try and understand what is actually going on here. In the last lecture, we blindly typed in the code to make sure the environment is working. But now is the time to try and get an idea of what is going on here. Before we do that, we are going to go to where we saved our code and we will copy the code from the last lecture and rename this 02 understanding the code. I think that's going to work better. And uh, it's 02, not 01. So my bad here. And I am going to drag and drop this on top of Visual Studio Code to open that project. Now, if I hit on main.py here, you see the exact same thing we saw in the last lecture. We have a syntax highlighting now. And the first thing I want you to do that is going to save you a little bit of time is to come to file and toggle auto save. Okay, you're going to click on auto save here. And now things are going to be auto saved as you type things and you won't have to hit control S or come here to say save. That's going to save you a bit of time. Now let's try to understand the code. But before we do, let's make sure it actually runs. So we can come to view terminal and hit the app arrow. And this is going to bring back the command we typed the last time we ran a Visual Studio Code. This is really cool. If you want it, you could uh, type this Python main.py and hit enter and uh, uh, Python. Let's type that correctly. And if we run, we're going to see our window pop up here. Now, the code here, the first line is importing the components that we need. For this code, for this project, we need the Q application and Q widget. And these are part of the Qt widget module that comes as part of the Pi side installation that we did. So this is really importing the components we need. And here you could either import sys or not import it. But I just wanted you to see that it is possible if you want to process command line arguments. Okay, so sys is a module that is responsible for processing command line arguments. And once you have them, they are going to be picked up by the Q application instance you have here, and you will be able to process them in your Qt application. So that's what the sys thing here does. Okay, once we have our sys thing here, we can create our application and an application is really like a wrapper that is going to be englobing everything you do in your Qt application. So it is going to be the thing responsible for running your application and waiting for things to happen as you interact with your application. For example, if you click on a button, all those things are going to be happening under a wrapper that is this app object here. This is as simply as I can explain it. After we have our application, we will create our widget and we name it window in our application here. And by default, widgets or windows in Qt are hidden. So we need to show it. And after we show it, we will call the exec method on our application to start the event loop. And the event loop really is a while loop, something that keeps looping around waiting for things to happen. So for example, if we run our application, let's bring back our terminal and uh, we run it again. So for example, if we run it and there happens to be a button in our application here, if you click on the button, the event loop is going to be the thing that catches that click you do on the button and it is going to respond. I realize I am jumping around here trying to go as deep as I can, but that's the gist of what is happening here. The exec call here is going to start the event loop. So let's say that here. Okay, and uh, this is really all that is happening here. Another thing I want to say is that if you have been working with Python, you may have seen things like this, calling the exec method with an underscore after the C. And let's try to run the code with this. So let's bring back our terminal and try to run again. And you're going to see that it is going to work. 
but you see a comment saying that this thing will be removed in a future versions of Python and they are recommending using exec instead. And this is coming because of older versions of Python that had problems with the exec command here. In Python 3, I believe this is going to work well. So the convention we will be using here is not to use the underscore. We will be typing exec like this. And you will see the same things on the print function you have in Python. So if you want to print something, you can say print and it is going to print that, but you can also use an underscore. Again, this is something that comes from older versions of Python, but in this course, we won't be using these underscores here. Another thing I want to point out is that you can use the documentation to learn about everything you want about Pi side six. So for example, if you want to learn about this widget thing we are using here, you can go to your favorite search engine and say Pi side six and say Q widget. And this is going to pull the documentation for a Qt for Python. If you open this, you will have all the information about that thing. So let's see what they say here. You can click on more and you can increase the size of this because I like larger text. And it is the atom of the user interface. It is a base widget on top of which you can build a lot of other things. I do recommend reading up on this if this is your first time with Qt. So you can create a widget. A widget can have a bunch of components. You can create other widgets on top of this, but we will have a chance to learn about all these things as we progress in the course. But it won't hurt to take a moment and read about this and how you can use this in your Python applications. So this is all I had to share in this lecture, trying to shed some more light on what is going on behind the scenes. We are going to stop here in this lecture. In the next one, we will try and organize our code in separate files so that things are easier to work with. I will see you in the next lecture.